Hello, my name is Vlad, and today's topic is projectile motion. We will be considering two types of projectiles, the ones thrown horizontally and the ones thrown at an angle. We start with projectiles launched horizontally. An airplane flying horizontally releases a ball. If we do not account for air resistance, horizontally the bomb continues moving at a constant velocity which is equal to the velocity of the airplane. Vertically, the bomb accelerates as a free-falling object with acceleration of minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, since the horizontal velocities of the airplane and the bomb are equal, the bomb will always be under the airplane at any moment in time. This was a real issue in World War I when airplanes flew at altitudes of 20 to 30 meters. The bomb exploded just under the airplane and sometimes the airplane was destroyed. It took them some time to realize that they needed a time delay fuse so that the explosion would take place a few seconds after the bomb hits the ground. The first thing we need to realize is that for a launch projectile the vertical motion is independent of its horizontal motion. That is, we can use the Suvat equations to describe the vertical motion of the bomb. When we are solving problems involving bombs, we are particularly inter interested where the bomb is going to land, that is, the range of the projectile. Now, horizontally, the bomb is moving with constant velocity, u. So, the range of the projectile, or horizontal displacement, is equal to u multiplied by t. Now, we know the initial velocity of the bomb, that is, the initial velocity of the airplane, we only need to find t. To find t, we need to consider the vertical motion. So, the displacement of vertical motion is equal to the initial vertical velocity, which is actually zero because the bomb is launched horizontally, multiplied by t plus one-half acceleration multiplied by t squared. Now, since initial vertical velocity is zero, we can write s vertical is equal to one-half at squared. From this, we take t, so t is equal to 2s vertical divided by a, then the square root. So, the time can be found by considering the vertical motion. So, horizontal displacement is equal to initial velocity u multiplied by t, which is square root of 2 times s vertical divided by the acceleration. But let's introduce some numbers to the equation. Let's say that the initial velocity of the airplane was 180 meters per second and the altitude or the height is 1200 meters. Now, let's consider the vertical motion of the ball. So, vertical. Initial velocity for vertical motion is zero because the bomb is launched horizontally. The final velocity we do not know. The displacement is minus 1200. Minus because the bomb is moving downwards, so minus 1200. Now, acceleration, obviously, minus 9.8 meters per second squared, and time is what we need to find. We are interested in time and the range. To find time, we choose a Suvat equation. Well, since we do not know the final velocity of the bomb, and we are not particularly interested in it, we choose the first Suvat equation. 
S equals to UT plus one half AT squared. So S is minus 1200 equals U is zero multiplied by T plus one half multiplied by nine minus 9.8 multiplied by t squared. So from here we get that t squared is equal to minus 1200 divided by 1 half multiplied by minus 9.8 which gives us t is equal to 15 point six seconds fifteen point six seconds this is the hang time of the bomb or the time of flight since we know the time we can find the horizontal displacement or the range so horizontally the motion is uniform so horizontal displacement is equal to u multiplied by t so that's 180 multiplied by 15.6, which gives us 2,820 meters. So the pilot has to release the bomb 2,800 meters in advance. Another example, Superman, one week after his humiliating bus ride, is flying again at a height of 320 meters with a velocity of 70 meters per second when suddenly he forgets how to superman. Now, we're interested in the range of the superman that is how far horizontally he will fly we're interested in the time of flight and we are interested in the final velocity. Now, considering the vertical motion and the horizontal motion separately we can find what we need. Now, first we consider the vertical motion. His initial velocity is zero, vertically wise. Now, his final velocity, we do not know. Then uh, his displacement, his vertical displacement S, is minus 320 because he's displacing downwards and acceleration obviously minus 9.8 and we need to find t so two things which we need to find first of all uh, let's find t to find t we take a suvat equation not containing v so that is s equals u t plus one half a t rearranging to make t the subject um, the, uh, we have considering that initial velocity is zero s is equal to one half a t squared so t is equal to square root of two s divided by a now s is minus 320 so two multiplied by minus 320 divided by acceleration which is minus 9.8 gives us 8.08 .08 seconds so this is the time of flight so we can write down 8.08 .08 seconds now we need to find the final velocity and the range to find the range we need to consider the horizontal motion so horizontal Horizontally, Superman is moving at a constant velocity of 70 meters per second, and the time of flight is 8.08. .08. So therefore, displacement horizontally, or the range, is equal to 8.08 .08 times 70. 8.08 .08 times 70, which gives us 566 meters. That is the range of the Superman, so he will fly 566 meters. To find the final velocity, and final velocity of the Superman when he hits the ground contains two components, the vertical component and the horizontal. 
Horizontal component we already know. It is 70 meters per second and it does not change throughout the flight. To find the vertical component of the velocity, we once again consider the vertical motion. So we have t, which is equal 8.08. .08. We have acceleration, which is minus 9.8. And we need to find v. Yes, since initial velocity is 0, we need to find v. We use the formula v equals u plus at. So final velocity is equal to 0 plus minus 9.8 multiplied by t, which is 8.08, .08, which gives us minus 79.2 meters per second. So when Superman hits the ground, his horizontal velocity is 70 meters per second, and his vertical velocity is 79.2 meters per second. Now, we need to find the resultant velocity, which is, which can be found using the parallelogram rule. So, using the Pythagoras theorem, we find that the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity, v, is equal to square root of 70 squared plus 79.2 squared which gives us approximately 106 meters per second. But velocity is a vector and only stating the speed of the object does not give us the velocity. We need the direction. The direction can be given as an angle to the horizontal, so we are looking for this angle theta. To find theta, we first need to find a trigonom trigonometric ratio responsible for theta. For example, this is tangent. So, tangent theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent, which is 79.2 divided by 70. S now we can find theta, which is equal to inverse tangent of 79.2 divided by 70. So theta, well, you all can cal calculate it by yourself, is 48.2. 0.5 degrees. So, now we can state the velocity of Superman. If 106 is his speed, his velocity is 106 meters per second at an angle of 48.5 degrees to the horizontal. The second type of projectile motion involves projectiles launched at an angle to the horizontal. Today, we're throwing an elephant with a velocity of 36 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees. First thing we need to find is the vertical and horizontal components of the initial velocity. Using trigonometry, we can find that the vertical velocity, initial vertical velocity, is equal to 36 multiplied by sine 20, which gives us 12.3 meters per second. The horizontal velocity, on the other hand, is 36 multiplied by cosine 20. Cosine 20, which gives us 33.8 meters per second. So, the initial horizontal velocity is 33.8 and the initial vertical velocity is 12.3. Now that we know the initial vertical velocity, let's find the time it takes for the elephant to get to the top part of his flight. So, vertically, vertical motion is independent of horizontal, so initial velocity is 12.3 Final velocity here is zero because the elephant is moving horizontally. 
So final velocity is zero. Acceleration is minus 9.8 and time is to be found. So we take the SUVAT equation not containing S. We don't have S. So it is V equal U plus AT. Substituting the known values, zero equals to 12.3 minus 9.8 multiplied by t. So t is equal to uh, 12.3 divided by 9.8, which gives us 1.26 seconds. So it takes the elephant 1.26 seconds to reach the top part of the flight. It is quite easy to prove. I'm not going to do it here, you can do it by yourself, that it takes the elephant the same time to reach the ground. So the total time of flight is 2.52 uh, seconds. So total time is 2.52 seconds. To find the maximum height of the elephant, we once again consider the vertical motion. So vertically, Initial velocity is 12.3 meters per second. Final velocity is zero because the elephant is moving horizontally. Uh, then uh, time is 1.26 seconds. So using the third SUVAT equation, S equals U plus V divided by 2 multiplied by T which gives us 12.3 plus 0 divided by 2 multiplied by 1.26 which gives us 7.75 meters. This is the maximum height of elevation of, for the elephant. Now, to find the range we consider the horizontal motion. The total time of flight is 252 and horizontally the distance is equal to initial velocity u horizontal multiplied by t which is 252. So this gives us 33.8 multiplied by 2.52 which gives us 84.9 meters. So the range for the elephant is 84.9 meters and the maximum height is 7.75 meters. Javelin throwers at the Olympics always try to throw their javelins at an angle of 45 degrees and there's a reason for that. The theory predicts that a projectile launched at an angle of 45 degrees will have the maximum range. A projectile launched at 30 degrees would go lower and have a smaller range. A projectile launched at a 60 degrees angle would take a higher path and will have the same range as the 30 degrees angle projectile. This is a peculiar fact. But this is when we don't take into account for the air resistance. When we do, it's a different picture. The Germans were experimenting with high-velocity artillery shells during World War I. They found that an artillery shell launched at an angle of 55 degrees gave a much bigger range than an artillery shell launched at an angle of 45 degrees. This is because of air resistance. You see, the projectile launched at 55 degrees went into the stratosphere where the effects of air resistance are negligible and it had less deceleration during its flight. So it had a much bigger range. You see the effects of air resistance here. They discovered that a projectile launched at an angle of 55 degrees gave a much bigger range than an artillery shell launched at an angle of 45 degrees. This is true when speaking of high-velocity artillery shells. The 55-degree shell took a much higher path and it was able to reach the stratosphere where the effects of air resistance are negligible. 
and it decelerated much less, giving a much bigger range. The cannon the Germans used during World War I was called the Paris Cannon, and it terrorized the French capital for over six months, being able to shoot high-velocity projectiles from a distance of over 130 kilometers. And that's all for projectiles. Thank you. Goodbye.